imagine that there is a parallel world compared to this one. So we have a world where I have created this video and you're watching this video. And there is another world where I did not create this video, so you wouldn't have been able to watch the video. And also there is another world in between where I have created a video, but you did not watch this video. A git branch is similar to this parallel world concept, where you can have a branch that stays the same in one world, and you can branch off into a different world. And once you finish completing your code, you can complete the branch, just like how we merged in the previous video. So let's take a look at how to create a new branch. To create a branch, you can open up your Git client fork in our case and go to the left section. Right click on the branch you want to branch from and select create new branch. You can name your branch anything you want. Usually the first branch we create as developers is the development branch. So let's name our so let's name our branch the development branch. And then click create and checkout. Checkout in this case means to move to the development branch. Once you have created the development branch, you can see that there are now two branches on the left side in the sidebar. The master branch and the development branch. In the Git history, you can also see that there's a new tag that says development that is on the same commit as master and origin master. Now you may be wondering why we create a development branch in addition to a master branch. Imagine that you have a code that is ready for people to see. So something like a website that you put it up and this is on the master branch. Now, when you commit code to the master branch, it means that you are changing the website directly. And if you introduce any bugs onto the website, other people can see your bug immediately. Now we are humans. We don't want this to happen usually because we make mistakes. So what we do is to create a new branch and we work off this branch. When we are done, when we are sure that there are no more errors and no more bugs, at least we try to, we push back to the master branch to update the website for our visitors. That's a general idea why we use a development branch. And in this case, the master branch is often called a production branch. Now let's see how coding on a new branch would look like. When you create a new branch, you can code directly on that branch itself so any code that you change will be reflected only on the new branch. Let's say we want to create a new file and we call the file development.md. And in the development file, we say, hello, this is committed from the development branch. We hit save and we can commit this if we go back to fork. Now make sure that uh, you are on the development branch when you do the commit because you don't want to change between branches and accidentally commit this to the master branch. In fork, you can tell that you're on the development branch by looking at the branch that is bolded. In other Git clients, that will be slightly different. So what we are going to do is to stage the development file and to commit the development file. Once we have completed the commit, we can take a look at the Git history and we see that the development branch is one commit ahead of the origin master branch and also ahead of the local master branch. So this shows that we can code as much as we like on the development branch without affecting the master branch and the origin master branch. If you want to save the development branch onto the Git remote, you can push 
it up. The steps will be similar to the steps when you push the master branch for the first time. So you need to create a tracking reference as you push. And once you push, you can see the origin slash development tag on the same commit as the local development branch. If you want to switch between branches as you are developing, you can double click on the branch you want to go to. So if we double click on master, we will check out the master branch. That means to switch to the master branch. And if you look at the project files, you will not see the development.md file because that hasn't been created in our master branch yet. Now let's get back to the development branch. If you feel that you are done with the development process and you are ready to merge the branch back into master to show your visitors, you can do a merge. So previously, when we did a git pull, we do an auto merge at the same time. But right now, we want to do a merge manually. To do a merge, you need to check out the branch you want to merge to. So if we want to merge to the master branch, we need to check out the master branch first. So double click on the master branch to check out. Then to merge the development branch into the master branch, you can right click on the branch you want to merge from and select merge into master, which is our current branch. Then Fork will ask you whether you want to create a merge commit. Some Git clients don't ask you that and they merge it automatically for you. Select merge and you will see that the Git history has changed again. This time master is way ahead in front of the development branch and the origin development branch. This is because we have done a merge and master is two commits ahead of the origin master. So we see a number two on the sidebar. And if you want to push it up, you can click on push to update the Git remote for the master branch. And this is how you merge a branch. When you're done coding, the branch will be useless. You can clean it up. You can delete it if you want to. To delete a branch, you right click on the branch you want to delete and select delete the branch. You can also choose to remove the branch from the remote as well. In this case, in fork, we say we check the box that says delete remote branch and select delete. Fork will do the rest of the job and remove the development branch and the development origin branch. When it's done, you can take a look at the Git history and the development tag and the origin development tag would have disappeared from the history altogether. So this is how branching works. In summary, a branch is like a parallel world where you can create commits without being afraid of introducing bugs into the code because you can always fix them before you merge into the production code. When we work with branches, there is a well-known workflow called the Git flow. We will talk about Git flow, what it is and how to use it and whether you need to use Git flow in your daily projects in the next video. I'll see you in the next video.